Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel, Beauty on a Budget. My name is Heather and today is February 19th of 2024. And being that it's Monday, I will be doing uh, cleaning of my living room and dining room area. And I'm going to say I have nothing to do today. It's just after 11 in the morning. My house is, you know, clean. I vacuumed Saturday. The entire main floor I vacuumed on Saturday. And I have nothing to clean. I don't really feel like doing too much today. I mean, I've got some oh, something spilt. Oh, that's just the stuff off the um, the underneath part of the chair is our cat. She scratches it, so that just has to get swept up. But there's nothing for me to clean in here. The floors are fine. My kitchen area, there is nothing for me to clean. I know I'm trying to do these daily cleaning things and I've hit a point where just the cleaning every day has hit a point where there's nothing to clean. So yeah, it's gonna be interesting. So just even go like in the bathroom, same thing. I mean, oops, the light on, you know, like, there's like nothing to clean it's it's different I'm used to having like you know a house with kids and pets and messes everywhere there's my office craft room there is nothing to really clean today so um I mean I could bring up the vacuum and do some vacuuming I mean if I pull up I really wanted to pull out the furniture but I say today I'm not going to uh, do that so I'm bumping into the bench here so what I'm going to do today instead is I'm going to clean my uh, coffee maker. So I'll show when I turn on the power, even though I know there's no water or anything, but when I turn on the power, the button down here flashes because it needs to be cleaned. And do I have it here? Where did I uh, put it? Thought I, I usually keep my cleaner for my coffee maker in the cupboard right above the coffee maker. I don't see it. I'll be back in one second. All right, so I bought this one from Canadian Tire. It was $10. Now this is the descaling. So this is not necessarily the actual, like the cleaner that I prefer. I didn't see the one I normally get. So I bought this one instead. Um, it says you get three uses per bottle. It's saying to use one third of the bottle to clean this. Well, I'm going to clean my coffee maker my electric kettle, and I'm gonna also do the kettle that's on the stove. So I'll be doing those three today. So just gonna give me a second to set up my tripod and I will start, I guess, descaling and cleaning my coffee maker and teapots. All right, so this is the coffee machine descaling liquid. So it breaks down lime, uh, lime scale, improves brewing time and flavor, Helps extend the life of your brewer. Safe for all brewers. No vinegar. No no vinegar smell. So it says instructions. Empty one third of the bottle into the reservoir. Add your water to your reservoir. Brew for a full reservoir. Discard the solution and then you do it three more times with just plain water. So I'm going to do that in all three of these. I'm going to start with my coffee maker here. So. First thing, of course, when you're doing the coffee maker is you don't need the basket and I have a reusable basket, mine is full of coffee grounds. So I'm just gonna, I just grabbed a little dish I can just deal with that in a few minutes. Um, I still have this basket is still in here because that you kind of need, this needs to get clean too. So this I'm gonna leave in here. Uh, I had coffee last night, finished it off. So this is okay, I'm just gonna rinse this out. And then this comes up. So I gotta fill this up with some water. Now, this one has a. Out here. It's hard to get out sometimes. Mine has a filter. It's almost time for me to change this filter. But when cleaning the coffee maker or tea kettle, always take out the charcoal filters. You don't want this product going through your charcoal filter because every time you use it, you're going to be getting residue of the cleaners and stuff in here. So I'll just set that aside. So it says one third of the bottle. And 
knives right beside me. Just stab it so I can open it. So about one third of the bottle in here. You know how much is in here. I have no idea. I'm trying to see if I can get about a third of the bottle. It's about a third of the bottle. And I can say I can already tell that hitting here, this is gone cloudy, and stuff that was stuck down here is already lifting off. So I'll put that back in and then I'll just fill it up because so this tells me. You know how many cups of this to fill here so I'm gonna go rinse this out and get some water and top this up and then I also have my electric kettle here so I'm gonna pour you know some of this in here as well and you can just see it as it's pouring can you see it's all foaming it's getting rid of all the lime scale and all the other stuff that's stuck there. So I'll have to top this all the way up. And then the last of it, I'll be using in my electric in my kettle that goes on my stove. And I will show you the inside of this. Probably looks really bad. I do descale these ones. This one does not get descaled often. This tea kettle here, the electric one, is fairly new. So uh, this will be the first time I've ever descaled it. So now I'm just going to pour some of this in here. And again, it's just fizzing and I can just hear it fizzing, getting rid of all that calcium and everything. It's just coming off. So I'm just going to pour the rest of this in here. Just pour a little more into here. So it says about a third of the bottle. It's hard to know exactly, but I'm just going to add a little more to all these. So I'm going to top this up and put this on the stove to heat, uh, to boil. I'm going to top this up and put this on to boil. And I'm going to top this up and actually start the, the cleaning cycle. So I'll be back as soon as I get these all topped and filled with water. Okay, so the tea kettle I've already got turned on and the one on the stove I've already got it turned on. So for my coffee maker, I have just pressed the power and I press the clean cycle and it's going to have its countdown of doing what it has to do. So it's got a different setting that it cycles through. But I will say what I think is really neat is I'm watching the... the um, electric kettle here and I'm watching all the little things that were stuck on the bottom of it is just getting lifted up. So it's, I don't know how long it's going to take to do this. It has a timer of 23. I don't know what that means. I don't think that's 23 minutes. Although it could because it does go slowly through there. So I'm just going to leave this alone. I'm just going to leave this to let this boil. And I'm going to just let the other one to boil. So I'll be back when everything is boiled and I'm ready for the next step. I actually forgot about this other thing. So my coffee that I have, um, I only seem to, I only drink Starbucks. So, and I only buy it from, usually from Starbucks, although the grocery stores do sell Starbucks coffee now. But I just do the whole beans. I don't do the pre-ground stuff. Um, so, and I have my reusable basket here. Uh, it's winter, but in the summer I would dump this and I would throw it in all my rose bushes. Uh, in the winter, if I had my greenhouse set up, I'd be throwing this in with all my stuff for my greenhouse. But again, I got rid of all my plants. Uh, so right now, I feel bad, but right now this is just going in the compost bin. I can't help that. I don't have, I've got no way of storing this. I, mean, I could save some of the stuff I did before. I was saving this um, between doing my garden and with my plants I had in the house. Um, I had a big bucket and I would pour all my grounds in there and I would just save them and then use them every once a week. But like I said, right now I feel like it's such a waste right now. 
that I can't do that at the moment, but this will just go on the compost. So I'll clean those. And I definitely need a new filter. Uh, this is my last, I don't want to open this, because they are kind of hard, but this is my last um, filter for this coffee maker, so I will have to get a new filter. Actually, if I was thinking about it before I did all this, I should have taken this out and then left this in the machine to descale this as well. So what I think I'm going to do is put this in a dish and then when I pour out all the water that's been gone through, I'm going to have it, this will just be soaking in that water just for a little bit, just so I can get rid of some of this uh, old calcium and deposits and stuff that are built up on here. I definitely need a new filter for my coffee maker. That was what I was looking for and that Canadian Tire and that's where my coffee maker was from but they didn't seem to have any filters for mine when I was there earlier this week. So I will have to be on the lookout. And then the other place that sells this, they no longer exist. So I will definitely have to get some more filters for my coffee maker. Just feeding, just seeing nothing is, I know, still letting it boil. So I will be back when it's time to do the next step. Okay, so the one on the stove has boiled. The one over there is, oh. It hasn't turned itself off, so it hasn't boiled yet. But this one was just on before the other one was turned on. So now this is the boiled solution. So I have, like I said, I've got the little thing. I'm just gonna set this down so I don't burn myself. There, just if I just pour this, have this soaking in some of that solution, it might help descale that. And same with the little strainer here. I'm gonna some of this in here to help scale. Oh, I think I'll have to get a larger, um, I'm gonna grab a larger bowl. Just soak in a larger bowl. Let those kind of descale a little bit too. see past the steam but it's no longer white in there I can actually see the bottom of the pan or the bottom of the kettle so I'm adding more water and now I have to boil it three more times to really rinse it good itself off. I'm just gonna go check that. <laughs> yes, it turned off. So same thing. I'm just going to pour this all out. And you can see how clean the stainless steel is in there. So now I'm just going to top this with more water and do this three more times with clean cold water. And my coffee maker is now sitting at 14 minutes. So it probably will be a 23 minute because it's drip, it's going very slowly. So then I've also decided while I'm doing this, I might as well clean out my um, coffee grinder. So I'm gonna put this on the boil and I'll grab my coffee grinder. This is my coffee grinder my husband bought me. It's PC, so it's from Superstore. Um, Oh. Oh, I do.
do have some coffee that I've already ground up, ready to get used. And I'm just gonna do this. There is no, lock, unlock, which way is which? Be able to twist this to get this out. Do I have it? Last time it got stuck, it was there was coffee beans caught, and that might be the problem. Unlock, turn this way. There we go. Helps to read the instructions. So I'm going to wash this out. And yes, there are some coffee beans half ground inside the machine. I'm just gonna dump there. So I don't want to put anything moisture in here because I don't want it to wreck, but what I'm going to do is just dry wipe it out. Now this part here because I can pull it out and so I can dry it. I'm actually just gonna set this in that boiling water so it can even though it doesn't have um, it doesn't get anything that's going to be scaly on it. It's just sitting in some hot water, so it's just out of my way. And this is okay. This has got you know, ground coffee in it. I don't need to clean that. I'm just clean, dry cloth, so I know what I'm working with is dry. And I'm just wiping off the outside and all in here. It's coffee beans and stuff, ground coffee just gets all stuck in here. Just want to make sure that there's nothing hot. Gotta be careful because I know that it is a coffee grinder. So it does have parts that, you know, metal parts for grinding the coffee. So I'm just careful as to where I clean my hands. So don't blow into it unless you want a face full of coffee ground dust. But just doing a dry dusting. I will wipe the outside all off with a damp cloth because it does get, you know, touched with people's hands. It does sit on the counter. Anything you know, spills or whatever, but inside looks so much better. I do have a little tool that came with this. It's a little um, cleaning brush thing. I just and I don't know where it is right this exact moment, so but doing this is kind of like your toaster when you tip it upside down to shake to get the crumbs out. That's basically what I'm trying to do is just get any old coffee bits that are in there. So I think I've done as much as I can on the inside. I'm just gonna get this a little bit wet. Don't need a little, don't need a lot of water, but I'm just going to now just wash the outside of it. Because I do wipe this down quite a bit. But I don't want any moisture on the inside. Right here, this coffee just gets stuck right here in this opening. like that and I'm just going to wipe this outside off. I don't want to get too much moisture because I don't want to wreck the coffee grounds that are already in ready to get used. Just put this back. Now this lid I'm going to wipe it out in and out only because I do, you know my hands do touch the inside of this every time I fill the hopper. Off with 
turn it off and I can tell my kettle will be boiled in less than a minute and so will the other one. Look at that in the time it took to boil water. I've got my coffee grounder all clean. You can see, you can actually make, you can actually see the screws. I knew there was some metal in there. I didn't quite know what the shape was, but they are little screws. So I'm going to put this back in here. Just going to make sure I line it up with the lock and unlock. Get it to line up. Now in the locked position, and that is on. I'm just going to move this back over on the other counter, and I'm just going to. This one has. myself like I did last time. One burnt, one boil, so it's three, two. And I'm still waiting for the coffee maker to finish its first one. This is the second rinse. And the other one just off so I will grab that one fill it up and get it started and then I'm going to show you how I fill and actually grind my coffee. Okay so now I've got it plugged back in where it sits. Take this off. I'm just looking at my dial like how oh, it because there's my side here's got lots of different dials like how fine ground you like it. Um, I like mine a little more coarse, so kind of this little skinny dot over here is fine brown. This is like more coarse. I like my grinds more coarse. Now my coffee in here. I'm just gonna add whatever is in here to the hopper. It has a max line, so. I think I have enough in here to top this up. I do, so now I can actually wash this out and I can wash this little metal scoop out. Put it aside, put this on, and then I've got that. I just can't figure out where the So you've got pulse, and then you've got how long do you want it to grind for. It's like done in seconds. I like mine for a full minute. It will grind and it will fill this whole basket up. So and it's very loud, but I will start that in just a second. See how loud that is. So I will just grind all this coffee until this is full, and then I guess I get to choose a new kind of coffee today. So to refill this up. And my coffee maker here has a thing of four. So it's still doing its thing. So I guess it will take 23 minutes for it to cycle through. It's been a while since I cleaned it so I forgot how long it takes. So I can't do anything with this until it's the timer has gone off. So I'm going to grind this coffee, wash this out, and then decide what my next kind of coffee is. And then I'll empty this out and the other one out, and they've got one more time to be boiled, and then they will be clean. So I'll be back very soon. Okay, while I was doing this other stuff, the counter went down to zero. It was beeping. So I've topped this up back to this top line of 50 ounces or I guess my is 10 cups and I've just pressed the start button again so now it's gonna do this be this first cleaning time going through so we'll just set back to another 23 minutes 
Um, both of these now have the third and final rinse in them. They're about to go. But I had to go and grab my coffee. My Starbucks coffee, I did get down. I decide which one I want to use. And I've got this all washed out as well. So I have this one. It's the Cassie Cielo Antigua. Now this one I'm going to use next is this one actually has a 2021 date. This one got misplaced in the back of the cover. Um, I have this one here. It's the Italian Rose. Actually, maybe I'll read what they have in them. So this one has the notes of bright Meyer lemon and cocoa nips. And the Italian roast has notes of dark cocoa and toasted marshmallow. I have the Starbucks, the Pike Place roast, which is notes of cocoa and rich praline. And this is the one I just got uh, just a couple weeks back. And this is the anniversary blend, so it's 2023. We're just starting 24. And this one has notes of cedar spice and black truffle. And then I have this big one that I did not get at uh, uh, Starbucks. I got this at a liquidation place for I think $10 or $12. And it is 907 grams. And this is just, um, I don't know how you say that, but it's their espresso roast. So it's just a dark roast. But this is be more like they have more espresso, so it's the dark one. So, but like I said, I. I'm going to put these ones back up. But this one here that got misplaced in the back of the cupboard has the date of a 21. So this is the one I'm going to use now. And I know I can hear my kettle boiling in the background. That's okay. Pour this in. And because this coffee container is from Starbucks, it actually holds perfectly one full bag of their coffee. Whether it's ground or Whole beans fits perfectly in this. And then I do one other thing. I try to, so I don't know what blend this one was, but when I get the new ones, I'll just cut the bag down and I cut this label off here. Like that. So I know what coffee is being used at the moment. So I'll put that in, and I've got my little scoop here. Put that in, and put the lid on, and I'll put this back up in my cupboard. And like I said, now that one is done, and this will be done in just a minute. So I'll be back in just a couple minutes. All right, so this kettle here is done. I'm just wiping off the outside of it. This would be helpful if it's got stuff stuck here. Need a little bit of scrubbing power. But look how shiny that is inside. It looks almost brand new. I mean, there's a little bit of scaling I can still see down there, which, you know, I've had this teak, this electric kettle since, I don't know if it was like May or something around then. I don't know if I bought it, in, I'm trying to remember if I, I think it was in May I bought this. So, you know, to say I've had it a good six months now, then, you know, first time cleaning it. And I will say, if you miss or have stuff like this where you don't clean for a while, but then if you get on a good cleaning uh, cycle, I do find that anything that may have been not cleaned this time will come off the next time. There is just something sticky right across here, and that's going to need some scrubbing. I don't know, it feels like glue, the glue residue right across there. I don't know if that's from having this tea kettle, you know, being boiled like four times in a row, and if there was something there, or if it's from some packaging material, because I will say I found that too. Um, Sometimes packaging material, if you don't get it all off, if you don't wipe it down when you first start using it, months later you might still find residue of some of the packing material. 
like our fridge. I was cleaning out one of the crisper drawers and on one of the crisper drawers was the whole big plastic thing that was never peeled off. And this one too. It's to be nice. I said I've had this teak, this um nice uh this other kettle when I use on my stove. I've had this one probably about three years now. So it was really bad staying in, inside and I can still see. Uh, it's hard to see, but I don't know how to angle it so you can see in there. But there still is like residue, like scaly stuff kind of above the water line. So if I was going to do this again, I would probably soak it for a little bit first. Maybe fill it up above the max fill line for a while and have it just sit there and then pour out a little bit. And maybe some of that stuff that's above the max fill line would come off. But I will try that for another day. But I'd have to say, my, my tea kettle being three years, at least three years, maybe it's been four years, um, looks pretty good. Because it gets used almost every day. Whether or not I actually use it to boil water. But because I had kids and pets, I've always kept water in here. And then when I'm done using the main burner, I just put this on top of the burner. Just so then as the stove cools down, then my kids wouldn't get burnt. Or my animals, as well the cats. We had actually one of our cats actually burn their paws when we had... You know, the stove was not being used. We had just used the stove and then they walked across it. So I started doing that since that happened. And this has got sticky stuff here. And again, this is because it sits on the stove and it gets all oh, everything that splashes, splashes on it. And I, I know I don't wipe the outside of this as often as I should. There, that is done. Get some of that sticky stuff off. There. So my thing says 12 minutes. So I guess I'll be back in about 12 minutes when I'm ready for the next step of the actual coffee maker itself. Actually, I realized doing that and I went to come back over here and I still have these soaking. These have been soaking in this solution of water. As I was pouring all those things out, I was just pouring all the used water on top of these. And I'm just going to rinse these and I'm going to let these soak in some clean water. Now, like I said, this you're not going to notice how clean it is, but I notice a huge difference. But this one here, just rinse this off. You'll see that all the scaling stuff has gone off of the little holder, What's it called? the little filter holder. So that is good. Dump this out, rinse this out. I'm gonna get some clean, cold water. And just gonna soak these with some clean water just to make sure that there is no residue of the cleaning solution on them. And then I will be back. My coffee maker now is at, it says eight minutes and it's still got water to go through. So I'll be back when I'm ready for the next step with the coffee maker. All right, so the coffee maker just did what it needed to do with this final one. So I'm pouring this out. Adding in more cold water. Always make sure it's cold. Um, doing it with a coffee maker. Don't want to run hot water in. And then this will be the second rinse. So we'll need one more rinse after this. So I'm just gonna go over here and just press the button for the second rinse. Camera 
over, my hands are wet and full of the other ones. So now I've done that where it's just pressed the button for this will be the second time of rinse water going through here. So, and now for this one, it has a four minute timer. So I'll be back when it's ready for, I think the third and final rinse, and then I can make coffee today. Right, so my thing just kind of, it didn't make any beeping, nothing. I just happened to look, it's gone back to the clock. So it's done its cleaning cycle. So even though that says to rinse through three times, I guess I can only rinse it twice because it won't let me do another uh, rinse cycle, I guess. It, my, I don't know. So now I'm just going to empty this, wash this, the crap out, put my stuff all back in here, and then I will make my coffee. All right, so I've got this ready. I'm just gonna grab my little filter here. Just put it back in, lock it in place. It back in here. Right. Got fresh cold water. And pour it in. I'm gonna get spill everything all over this counter again. Pour this in. It is filled. Basket. Put that in there. And I opened it and it's dripping. One second, I gotta wipe that out. Okay. Probably just got some water dripping from somewhere up here. Water all seems to have been stopped dripping. Like I said, it's probably just some water probably stuck in here somewhere. When I opened up the lid, it just found its way out. I'm just gonna wipe the outside of this off. Spend all that time to wash the coffee maker and then forget to wash the outside of it. Not very good. My coffee maker also makes like one cup at a time if I want it to. I don't want to. It also makes it over ice. Uh, I don't really like iced coffee. My daughter does. So we haven't tried that one yet. So I told her, I said, this summer we will try that brewing coffee over ice. So that's all washed out and cleaned out. So now I've got my thing. I realize where did I put that? There it is. I need my little scoop. So I've got my coffee is all ground. little brush attachment. I'm just brushing the coffee down and away from the side because it gets stuck for some reason. The top here where the coffee comes in, it also gets stuck around the lid. So I just use the little brush and then I think it's 10 scoops or something. Down as I'm using it, then when I'm then I can see how much coffee is actually in here. So when it's coffee is all up at the front, then when I'm looking at it, I can't tell how much coffee is in here. I need a little more coffee. It's not enough coffee in the filter. I know what, what where the level of coffee is because this is not really the one I use. I've got one that's a little bit bigger that I use. Okay. 
lid back on. And I've got a big mess. is ready to go and now I just turn my coffee maker on and I like because so I've got light bold light gold and bold I seem to like gold the best so I'm just gonna make my coffee just let that do what it's gonna do so I'll be back when my coffee is made all right so my coffee maker just um, beeped at me saying that I can now pour myself a cup of coffee. It was a very long couple minute wait. This will be the first cup of coffee with the maker clean and I will just see how you know, if it really does improve the flavor when you clean the coffee maker. So that's my Starbucks coffee. And then I have the International Delight and this one is Caramel Waffle, oh, can't, can't we speak? Caramel Waffle Cookie. I don't even measure my creamer. I don't. You know, just pour some in, and then I've got my little frother here. Just whip it up until I get a nice and sometimes if I want to be extra fancy, which I don't have anything today, but if I had even just a little bit of like whipping cream or some other types of, not these ones, but just other regular creamers, I would whip them up separately and pour it on top of my coffee as well. But I'll see if it tastes better than a coffee a couple days ago. It tastes good. You know, it's coffee, it tastes fine. But that is how I clean and scale my coffee makers. And again, I just want to say thank you so much to everybody who's subscribing to my channel and watching my videos. And I'll see you in the next ones. Bye.